Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today will be part two of the Tesla Roadster BMS breakdown. Now part one we went over how the battery management board worked and we dug through that schematic and looked at how it was constructed. Unfortunately that is the only schematic we have uh, for the battery system of the Tesla. So I've went through the battery theory, uh, made up a block diagram, and I believe I know how the rest of the battery system is supposed to operate. So let's dig into that in today's video. Now here is my block diagram of the battery pack of the Tesla Roadster, or at least how I think it works. I've studied through the uh, theory of operation and looked through all the circuit diagrams. Unfortunately, the only information we have about the rest of the battery pack besides the battery management board is the theories of operation of the electronics and of the battery that Tesla released. I would love to have gotten the rest of the schematics for all the modules that are contained inside of the battery pack, but unfortunately uh, they just didn't release that. So we're going to work with what we have and uh, let's take a look uh, at how the internals of this battery pack works. Now, of course, we have our battery pack here, like we discussed in last video. We have our 11 sheets all connected together with CAN bus and all connected together with your RX and TX. Again, all 11 sheets are series together to make up a 400 volt battery pack. And after all the battery monitor boards of each sheet comes the battery safety monitor board. And unfortunately, we did not get the schematic for this. I would have loved to look at how this board was designed, but uh, unfortunately that was not included in any of the documentation. Now the battery safety monitor board is a, uh, is a unique module in the fact that it does not do anything like the battery monitor boards uh, didn't do anything. It takes its orders from the vehicle management system across the CAN bus. Now we discussed in last video how the battery monitor boards of each sheet have a uh, secondary protection, a sheet alarm that it can signal the battery safety monitor board with. And I believe that's through the RX and TX lines. However, that was not specified in none of the documentation. So let's take a look at what this battery safety uh, monitor board does uh, in the battery pack. Now, the first thing that the battery safety monitor board measures is the voltage output of the cell stack. Now, we know from last video that each sheet of the cell stack has a battery monitor board that reports all of the uh, battery pack parameters back uh, to the vehicle management system so it can make any decisions it needs to in case a cell goes into overvoltage, a module gets too warm, all of those kind of things. So as a secondary protection, uh, you have a voltage sense on the battery safety monitor. So I assume that the vehicle management system could add all of the cell stack voltages together and then compare that to the actual output of the battery pack to make sure everything is good to go. Just another redundancy here on this battery pack. Now the second thing uh, that the battery safety monitor will monitor is the current. So that is what this is here is the current sense board. And this is actually a module that is baked into the battery safety monitor according to the theory of operation. And it will monitor the average current and again report that back to the vehicle management system. So that way the vehicle management system can make a decision whether or not to cut off the contactors, which again the battery safety monitor can control. So the third thing now, the battery safety monitor does is control the output contactors. So the main power rail for the uh, whole entire uh, Tesla Roadster is controlled by these contactors. The vehicle management system can tell the battery safety monitor to cut off and it'll cut off uh, the main power uh, that goes to the power electronics module that controls the motor and the HVAC and all of those things. So let's take a look here at the uh, circuit diagrams that were given to us by Tesla. Uh, this is the first one. This is your auxiliary power uh, circuit diagram. So we see again our, the battery pack. The whole entire thing is just represented by battery. It doesn't um, uh, show the BMBs. It doesn't show the BSEM or the current sys board or any of that. It just shows it as one module. And then here are your power outputs. So here is your APS or your auxiliary power supply. Now this is a, a, a special separate thing. Uh, from the power electronics module and it controls all of your secondary um, operations so it would power the vehicle management system and all of those things in case your uh, contactors had to 
open, your vehicle management system could still manage uh, everything about the battery pack and still be able to operate. And so um, you have all of your um, different things. Of course, you have your windshield wiper motors and you have your lights and all that stuff all controlled here uh, by your secondary power. Again, all this is controlled by the battery safety monitor. It controls your auxiliary power supplies and all those things are all controlled by your battery safety monitor. Now, here is the, the interesting thing and really the big thing in, uh, in this uh, battery management system is uh, your high voltage. Now, there is a high voltage interlock that the uh, battery safety monitor does monitor. It, it goes from your HVAC to your power electronics module and then back to your battery to make sure that everything is operational. And if any of that high voltage interlock is broken, if anything loses connection, if there's a short circuit, it shuts the whole, whole, uh, whole entire operation down. And so... Uh, your battery outputs here to your HVAC uh, that goes to your cabin heater and to your AC compressor, and that and that is a function of the power electronics module. It's shown it's separate here, but it is a function of the power electronics module. And then have your battery pack going to your power electronics module. Um, here's your current sense loop, and then that goes off to your three phase motor, and also goes off to a battery heater in case it's uh, too low of a temperature outside. And then your charging comes in. Here and this is an interesting um, thing. Instead of the battery monitor board controlling charging, um, your power electronics module controls charging, and then that tells the vehicle management system. The vehicle management system then tells um, the battery safety monitor board what to do. So that is um, it for this part of the video. Uh, again, uh, there wasn't much to talk about for the power system of the rest of the Tesla Roadster, mainly because there isn't much documentation about the power system for the rest of the Tesla Roadster. They just kind of have given us a, a large overview of how it's supposed to work with no really technical um, documentation or anything to go through. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching part one. I am thankful for everyone that watched part one. The reaction to that was quite positive. Uh, please subscribe and like if you haven't uh, done that so far. Uh, I'm planning a series uh, in designing a your own BMS. I have a Milwaukee, an old Milwaukee M18 uh, power tool set uh, that is nickel metal, nickel metal hydride based, and I'm planning on making a lithium replacement for it. And so, stay tuned for those videos. Now, it's not economically viable. It's a lot better to either buy an adapter or just go out and buy a brand new Milwaukee M18 set. Uh, that is lithium ion, but I think it'll be a, a good exercise and a good teaching uh, tool in order to upgrade those batteries. So stay tuned for that. Again, like and subscribe, uh, share this video if you haven't yet, and uh, I will see you in the next video.